Today I'll show you how to mask a person against a blue background, and we'll be creating that mask using one of the oldest and most venerable commands in Photoshop, calculations. If you're working in a studio setting, then you may have access to a blue screen, in which case, good for you. But for most of us, it's so much easier to shoot against a cloudless blue sky. And so what we're going to do is take this image and set it against this slightly blurry, I blurred it, by the way, version of Ponte Rialto in Venice. And both of these photographs come to us from the Dreamstime image library. Link in the description. And in the end, we're going to end up with this final version of the copy position in which every one of her hairs blends beautifully with its new environment. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to be working with one of the oldest commands inside Photoshop, this guy right here, the calculations command under the image menu, which allows you to blend two channels to create a new alpha channel. Now, I want to show you very briefly here that what we're looking for is this. This is the kind of mask we want. So she needs to be white and the background needs to be absolutely black. What we actually have is what we can see here inside the channels panel. We have the red channel and the blue channel. Those are the channels we'll be working with. The red channel is going to resonate most brightly with any warm-blooded creature. So it doesn't matter skin tone, by the way. Darker people, of course, will look darker in this channel. More pale people will look brighter. However, this is also going to work with dogs and cats and horses and so forth. And notice that the background is relatively dark, whereas in a blue channel, the background is much, much brighter and she and any other warm-blooded creature is much, much darker. So even though these channels don't look all that much different at first blush, they are very different where Photoshop and the calculations command are concerned. So I'll go ahead and switch back to that RGB image, and I'll go up to the image menu and choose the calculations command. Now, do not be scared of this very old, weird dialog box. Basically, the idea is we've got source one, we're gonna blend it with source two, according to this blend mode right here, which is any one of the blend modes available on the layers panel and this opacity value. So really what you wanna pay attention to is the channel for source one, the channel for source two, and the blend mode, as I'll show you in, a just, in just a moment. Now, both Source 1 and Source 2 are going to be set to the active photograph, and so that's why they're both set to this image right here. For layer, you probably want merged. You can select a specific layer if you want to, but that gets much, much more complicated. In our case, what we want is to blend the red channel with the blue channel. We know that because I already told you about that. Now, if you want to be able to see what the red channel looks like without any blend mode, whatsoever. By default, it's multiply. I've set it to normal so we can see the red channel by default, by default that is. And that's because red is on top of blue. Source one is sitting on top of source two. So if, this, if these were layers, think of source two as being the background and source one being the layer that you're working on subject to the blend mode. If you want to see the layer below the background, then you would change the opacity to zero, at which point you'll see the blue channel all by itself. Now, in order to make blue channels work, I'm not going to go into detail about why this is right now. I'm just going to tell you the formula is turn on invert. Well, I will tell you a little bit. Notice how she's much brighter against a darker background. That's what we want. And so now what I'm going to do is change the opacity to 100% back to where it was. So we've got red on top, blue on bottom, invert turned on for the blue channel, turned off for the red channel. Now you can fiddle around with the blend mode. One really interesting blend mode is overlay. Notice that gives us an interesting effect. It gets, remember where we're going with this. We want her to be bright, we want the background to be dark. Or not hard light, by the way, that's not what, what I'm going for right here. I just wanna point out it's wrong, hard mix is right. Now, hard mix is amazing in that it really does get the balance right. We have a perfect mask in a lot of ways, just right away. The problem is, of course, we have these very jagged, goopy transitions. Well, if you change the opacity, if you take it down to something like 70% all the way down to 50%, you'll start getting much smoother transitions, but you are going to bring out some tonal distinctions inside of the face as well. In any event, that's another option. So overlay set to 100%, hard mix set to something like 70 to 50%, or 
Hey, real quick, what we're seeing is how blue screen masking works, but would you also like to know why? Along with more insights into the calculations command complete with sample files, well then join me at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash now. And now back to blue screen slash blue sky masking in Photoshop. Here's my preferred blend mode, by the way, here are them. There are two, Color Dodge and Linear Dodge. And so you can try those out. Linear Dodge is identical to Add. It's just that Add has a few more options available to you. I am going to switch between Linear Dodge and Color Dodge. So Color Dodge is getting us closest to our goal of a dark background and a bright foreground, at which point I'll click OK. And notice the Channels panel, what happens here. As soon as I click OK, we will see a new alpha channel. That is a non-color bearing channel inside the image and I'm going to go ahead and call it color dodge. In or it's just so I remember how I got here in the first place because I may come back to this image later. Now I'm going to make a modification to this channel because I need the background to be absolutely black and so I'll make a duplicate of it by dragging it to a little plus icon right there and that way I know each and every step as I apply it. You don't have to work this way just a good idea in my opinion. And now let's make the background black by going up to the image menu, choosing adjustments and choosing levels. If you prefer curves, by the way, knock yourself out. I'm gonna go with levels. And what I wanna do is take this region of darks right here in the histogram and make them absolutely black by dragging this guy up to the right hand side of that ledge right there. And that happens for me, for you it's gonna happen differently, but for me it happens at a uh, brightness value of 100. So anything 100 or darker is gonna become black now. And if you have a lot of stuff going on inside the face, then you can reduce the white point value. I don't. If I do, if I do reduce this value, I just get chunkier hair. I don't want that. So I'll take this back to 255. So in my case, 100, we don't need to worry about the gamma value. Leave that alone. 255, click OK. And again, I want to remind myself of that. So I'm going to enter 100 slash slash 255. The slash slash for me indicates that I didn't change the gamma value. It's up to you how you work. All right, now let's switch back to the RGB image. I'll switch back. Actually, I want to load this channel that I just created because it's good to go. Notice it's ready to be a mask by pressing the control key or the command key on the Mac and clicking on it. And that loads it as a selection outline. Switch back to the RGB image. Switch back to the layers panel. And then click on whatever mask icon you want. There's one right here in the, the hovering around taskbar. There's one at the bottom of the layers panel as well. Either way, you'll convert the selection to a layer mask and notice you will end up with blue color fringing. That, believe it or not, is desirable at this point because otherwise, if we didn't have any blue fringing, then that would mean we had jagged edges. We need this softness right here. Now we need to make it match the color of the rest of the image. You can go up to the select menu and choose select a mask. That's one way to work. And that will bring up the select a mask workspace if you're comfortable in it. I don't like it because it takes up the entire screen. So what I prefer to do is press the shift key before I choose the command. It's just a workaround. It's one of those things that Adobe added a long time ago. It, 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 it's a development thing. And they just haven't removed it from the software, not even in Photoshop beta. And this, that way you bring up Refine Mask, which is a much more nimble way to work in my opinion. Change this edge detection radius value to 10 pixels. That way you're reevaluating the edge in this 10 pixel radius. So it's tracing an edge around the image and reevaluating those colors right there. 10 is good. You can experiment with higher values. If you have more stray hairs, then you want a higher value right there. And then you could take shift edge down. Watch this. See if I take the shift edge value down, how I get rid of all that blue fringing right there, but I also end up with some very jagged transitions. So I'll set that back to zero. All right. Now, if I were to accept things the way they are, which wouldn't do me much good, right? I haven't really accomplished the deed I'm looking for. Then I would just change the layer mask. 
However, what I want to do, no, notice right there, output set to layer mask. What I want to do is turn on decontaminate colors. I want you to watch what happens to the blue fringing. As soon as I turn on decontaminate colors, that decontaminates the colors. The blue went away just like that. However, Photoshop is having to rewrite pixels inside the image itself, it, which is to say that means it's, it's going to do you a favor and set output to new layer with layer mask. And you want to leave it that way because you don't want to harm the original layer. Thing is, we still have haloing going on, do we not? At which point, to get rid of that, just crank the amount value all the way up to 100 and it goes away. Click OK and you have yourself a beautiful mask. Hey, let me know what you think. Not to mention, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if that only whet your appetite to learn more about the inner workings of calculations, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.